Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining me today. I'm Caroline Rohn, President of the Pfizer Foundation and Vice President of Global Health and Patient Access. At Pfizer, we're committed to advancing breakthroughs that change patients' lives, whether that's through the medicines and vaccines that we discover, develop, and bring to market, or the investments that we make in low- and middle-income countries to improve the delivery of healthcare for the most vulnerable communities. And we owe a lot of our success to the powerful women behind these efforts at every level of our organization. As we mark International Day of the Girl Child, a day that aims to address the challenges worldwide that girls face and to promote female empowerment, I'm so excited to participate in the World Women Foundation She's My Hero campaign and be here today with one of my very own Pfizer heroes, Katherine Jansen. Catherine is a remarkable female scientist that is currently spearheading Pfizer's work to discover and develop a safe and effective vaccine against COVID-19. Catherine, thanks for joining me today for this session. It's a pleasure to be here today. So let's dive right in. You're a scientist by training. What inspired you to become a scientist? So while growing up in Germany, I caught frequent throat infections and, uh, and coughs. And uh, my father, who is um, uh, a chemical engineer, he would always have a, a treatment, little pills that made me feel better. And I have these memories. Uh, one moment you have this coughing fit or you have awful throat pains. And the next um, you get an antibiotic or a cough medicine and all of a sudden you feel like yourself again. It was then that I decided to become a scientist so I could discover, discover medicines to, uh, to help people. And once on that path, I also discovered my passion for vaccines uh, to prevent people from becoming ill in the first place. What inspired you to, uh, to work in health? Well, you know, it's interesting. You got sick as a child and that inspired you to become a scientist. But for me, my parents unfortunately became sick when I was young. And so they were my inspiration to enter the health field. Now I thought about going down the physician path, but of course uh, chemistry was not my number one subject. And so I took the route of public health and I spent time on a variety of health issues, including a lot of work in the infectious disease space. And I'm just so excited that today, as part of my job at Pfizer, I lead our efforts to address the complex challenges that are facing the global health landscape. So you and I both have a completely different set of skills, yet uh, both of us are using those skills to push for what we believe in, which is greater access to medicines and healthcare. Absolutely. And so I'd love for you to tell me a little bit more about what it was like climbing the ladder as a female scientist. Where do I start? <laughs> so in Germany, I grew up in a world where women were expected to be uh, housewives and women pursuing uh, science and medicine were actually uh, very uncommon, uh, particularly uh, searching a career in, in industry. And my parents were always adamant about my education and initially actually not very happy uh, about my choice to become a scientist. They were worried about me facing difficulties as a female, particularly in, in industry, uh, but they supported me in, in my interests. So I knew I was going to have a career in science and medicine and I would have to overcome many obstacles of gender inequality, prove myself, and not give up uh, no matter what. So um, even when doing a tour um, at a pharmaceutical company in Germany with my microbiology class, the females in the class were asked, why are you even pursuing a PhD? You likely plan uh, to get married and have babies and drop out. I, you know, that leaves me virtually speechless, right, in today's world. Um, it's amazing what you face to get where you are today. And, you know, I wish I could say that gender inequality is unthinkable, even in 2020. But with all the great progress we've made in the past few decades, it's unfortunately still the reality for many. We face a daunting STEM gap 20 years after the acronym STEM entered our lexicon. 
While women make up nearly half of the U.S. labor market, they are they make up only 28% of those employed in STEM fields. And unsurprisingly, the gap is most acute for Black and Latina women who represent only 5% of employed STEM professionals. So it's clear that a lot more work needs to be done. And that's why holding these conversations is so important and making sure the conversations uh, do start early in life. I'm sure you also encounter challenges of uh, gender inequality and in your career paths, right? I have, unfortunately. You know, different from what you encountered, but my work does center on corporate social responsibility, ensuring our social mission aligns with our business mission. And to be honest, a lot of people see this work as soft or fluffy, feminine. They don't think it takes business acumen skills. They don't think it requires strategic thinking, discipline, or perseverance. And of course, they're wrong. It requires all of the above um, and, and then some. But I think that's one of the reasons I love working at Pfizer, because it requires me to work in all aspects of our business. I get the opportunity to talk with you and work with you, Catherine, but I also get the opportunity to work with our commercial teams and think about access plans for our medicines and our vaccines. We get to collaborate with legal and compliance as we think about how to deploy grants quickly to communities that need our support. And of course, we get to work with HR, where we get to think about our talent, our most valuable asset, and how we can deploy those individuals and people with skills to meet the needs in global public health. And I think when you can tap into all the resources that the company has to offer, you can drive real impact and create sustainable change. The impact that you and the Pfizer Foundation have on millions of people around the globe each year is truly inspiring. It makes me proud to work at Pfizer. Well, thank you, Catherine. So I know you're the busiest woman in the company right now. So to close, let's talk about the concept of heroes since that's what this campaign is all about. For me, I have to say that I remember watching you, Catherine, on NBC Nightly News early in the COVID-19 pandemic, turning to my two sons who were on the couch with me and saying, hey boys, you see her, she's my hero. So it's one of the reasons that I love working at Pfizer because I get to meet people like you, incredible women leaders who are leading by example and blazing a trail for the next generation. Well, thanks so much, Caroline. Uh, that is kind of you to mention, and it really means a lot to me. So for me, I feel we often talk about heroes, men mostly, in the context of superheroes having often unattainable strengths and capabilities. This is really not a good image and can be very discouraging. Instead, let's showcase and see the many courageous women in every profession and at every level that accomplish the most wonderful things for humankind and societies. It does not take unnatural superpowers, but knowing what you want and going for it full steam. And a hero to me is the woman that fearlessly breaks down barriers and pursues her own dreams in small or large ways, even if the dreams don't fit accepted societal norms. This can take many different forms and roles, but ultimately, it is the woman that isn't afraid to push forward, even when the rest of the world is telling her this will never work. Incredible, Catherine. Thanks so much for those final words. That's all we have time for today. We know you have to get back to work. So thank you for joining me. And a special thank you to the World Women Foundation for allowing us to host this important conversation. To learn more about Pfizer and Catherine's efforts, as well as our work in global health, and our efforts to advance gender equity, please visit Pfizer.com. Thanks again and be well. <music>